with a little bit of this and, uh, uh, and the uh, things of the, yeah, Sister Kathy did. Help us a little bit with uh, number 10. Of course, as you know, we had been studying uh, 10 lepers and we kind of get a little bit of a basis, if, if we could, on things I look and I was thinking today of, you know, the, the, there was times in the Bible, you know, that uh, I guess God allowed uh, and put forth uh, those ten times to Pharaoh uh, that, that they, that, I, I look at it, I guess God goes to the uttermost to help us, but there is somewhere there's an end to it. I don't know where it's at, but I know in the Bible he was long-suffering with old Pharaoh and, and the people of Egypt's land and to bring his bring the people out, and so the plagues that were there was not to punish people, but to get them to see that he was in control, that, to, that this word and the gospel went to Pharaoh and then we, we, of course, as we studied uh, in Luke 17 of the 10 lepers, uh, you know, the question was asked, were there not uh, 10 and only one return to give God glory? Uh, that he comes to us all, that it's uh, from beginning of time to the end of time, uh, that uh, those, that we all, you know, are we going to be counted? Sit and think of it this way, I guess is that we're counted as one but only this one and in our segments of time are you know we're not a different church now people people say a lot of times the early church well like sunday was early church too <laughs> if you want to have it you know and here if we meet again on sunday and so on like that or 10 years ago they had a church in, in communities and that was an earlier church built or whatever but I understand what people's talking about, but it's actually only one church. People look and say, you know, church in the wilderness, you know, that Moses and all those, but it's all one church. So back to the thing that, that we're all as one, uh, you know, God from, from all beginning to end, and, you know, do we want to be counted as that one, in, counted in amongst the number, and there's, you know, that's amongst the living, uh, those that have come to back to give God glory. So I was th thinking of some of the things today on uh, old Pharaoh and the you know the ten times that God was long suffered with Pharaoh, and finally he you know God knew where the breaking point was going to be to uh, get people to change the mind if the mind's going to be changed and the heart going to be changed. And uh, God also knows if it's not going to change, you know, because He sees the intent, the content of the heart, knows what it is, but what's not going to uh, how we are, um, because He knows how the makeup of us. And uh, but He gives us a choice, and He gives us a, um, the gospel to come to us, and then, you know. And I'll say this: and hush. Um, but you know, it's uh, you've heard me say it, preach it, repeat it, teach it over and over, that the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men, teaching us to deny the godliness of worldly lust to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. So God, you know, everybody, you know, could look and say, I have, uh, I, God has not called to me. And when we stand before him, you know, you can convince everybody else, say, well, God's never brought it to me. Uh, you can convince people out here, out in the world, and maybe even some in assemblies, but God's going to look at you and say, don't you remember when your heart thought upon me? So he knows all of that. So the grace of God, God's unmerited love, has appeared unto all men. And uh, he wants us and to give us the faith to believe in him. And here's the disaster of it is if we reject the grace of God and, and we turn away from that faith that God has given every man, every person 
upon this earth a measure where we could be saved by and we could step out and say yes I believe in God through Jesus Christ and it's got to be through Christ alone and if we believe in God any other way he's not going to accept us in and we'll have to stand there for that judgment of it and to be outcast so Sister Kathy do you have anything to start us off with on the number on 10 yeah. the basis of it I was uh, trying to find some different places and I prayed about it because for some reason it bothered me I was afraid I wouldn't be able to to show uh, how you see it so I've been praying about it and then God helped me and I'm thankful for that so let's go to first um, Peter uh, 3 and 19 or 18 because all of this is the basis of Christ getting us out of prison, out of our sins that hold us down, and that he comes in each time and each kingdom to bring us out of our kingdom into the kingdom of his dear son, which is a separate kingdom from all the kingdoms of all this earth. And this prison that, that holds you is sin, and it's a darkness, so he wants to bring you up out of your prison. And from the very beginning, Christ has had this message to preach to those that are captured by the flesh or in the prison of sin. So 1 Peter uh, 3 and 18. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. We have to put the same thing. Christ was our example. we got to let this old fleshly man die. So when he came to John and wanted to be baptized, he John knew, but Christ said, Suffer it to be so to fulfill all righteousness. Christ was showing us the truth and the way. In every time frame, he shows us that that we've got to let the flesh die. So by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. So Christ was showing us, until you do what's right and come out of the flesh, you can't preach to anybody. But as soon as you come up out of that baptism, what did he do? He went and preached, as it said in Matthew and the different scriptures. And that's what we do. As soon as we come out of our prison, out of sins that weigh us down and keep us in darkness, then we can go and preach to those that are out in the world captured by sin, which sometimes were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. The light figure whereunto even baptism doth now also save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So we see that even now, that same baptism <coughs> must be had. You must have it. You must let this water, this word, wash your sins away. And then as soon as you believe that you are washed by the water of this word. Then you are baptized by the Holy Spirit. Only when you're clean does the Spirit then come in because God will not dwell in an unclean temple. He wants to dwell in a temple that has been purified by the water. So then, now let's go to Revelation. Um, let's see, no. Okay, Revelation uh, 2 and 10. Um, well, let's go back to, uh, this is the uh, Nicolaitans. And uh, so let's go 7 because it's all, all, all this is about the overcoming. And it, eventually I'll get to the 10 and you'll be able to see it. He that hath an ear, let hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. 
To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is the midst of the paradise of God. The only way you can eat of that is to be saved. So we see you must overcome. And what are you overcoming? The flesh. The, the fleshly mind, the fleshly ways. And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead in his life. That's Christ. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He, it will be from the first and it will be to the last. I know the works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Who will be your enemy? Who will be the one that will put you in a spiritual prison, so to speak, was the synagogue of Satan, which are the Pharisees and the scribes, not teaching the true word of Christ. Christ came to those Pharisees, just like we talked about the uh, lepers. You know, those priests were teaching and preaching a way that Christ was not satisfied with. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Do you think Satan can only put you in prison for ten days? So we know it must be spiritual. He's showing you in these kingdoms which have been in the earth, you must, as long, there's a time and a finish to it. When that kingdom ends, another one may start, but you know, remember the thing, these 10 times, then something else comes along. So let's go over to show you these 10 times over in, let's see, Revelation. Okay, the way you're gonna see the whole world is you're gonna to have to understand Christ said, are there not 12 hours in a day? This day has been upon the earth, which is the spiritual day. If you're in that day, which is light and not darkness, but darkness is beside, as he comes, those hours are there. There. So we're going to see these kingdoms. They have their hour and power of darkness. If you choose to stay in that kingdom and in that darkness, you can do so. But they got their power and that darkness or their understanding from the very beginning. And you'll stay in that darkness and that day will be over one day. But there's ten times because those kingdoms are ten. So uh, let's go Revelation 17 and 9. Here is the mind which hath wisdom. And the seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. There are seven kings, five are fallen, one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. Everybody in the flesh, you just have a short time. The flesh has a short time upon this earth. And we see that naturally, and we also see it spiritually. The beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seventh, and goeth into perdition. You're going to come out of one of those seven mountains or seven times or seven kingdoms. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. So we're seeing this time frame. And Christ said when they tried to take him, he said, it is your time and your hour. But, you know, he said, my hour has not yet come. So he was talking about the spiritualness because we know at the time of Christ, he was there longer than that one hour. It yeah. took more actual time, but he's talking the spiritual time. And so we must always remember that spiritual day and that spiritual time of darkness. Each one has their side by side from the beginning to the end. But you're going to come out of one of these kingdoms. You're going to come out and be like, uh, there's seven mountains. You're going to come out of one of those time frames. They did from the beginning, and then they were not a part of the world. So we see, though, he's made a perfect time frame set up with all these numbers. These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them. 
And there's that overcoming again. He's showing that in 2 Peter. You, when you come out of your flesh, and that's what he showed each of us, we must let that old man die, or else you stay in your sins. Uh, so, and he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. So, when we come into the kingdom of Christ, we speak with a different tongue. Well, I still may speak American or whatever language, but I'm speaking the language of the Bible then. I don't have my own doctrines. I don't have my own beliefs. I don't have my own gods. I have but one Savior and one Heavenly Father. So, and the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the horn, shall make her desolate, naked, shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For God hath put it in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. So we see that thou, uh, thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Who reigns over us? It's not anyone here upon this earth. We have a heavenly father. We have a heavenly mother. We have a spiritual birth. So when you come out of any of these kingdoms and come into his time you're coming out of one of those places it's it was from the beginning it will be to the end so let's go to matthew 25 all that 10 means is you come out of one of those nations but those nations have been from the beginning in the first mountain to the last mountain because we see in the beginning we see that great egyptian they rose up yet people there were people saved out of Egypt. There was people saved out of the Babylonian Empire, the Roman Empire, the American Empire. We see each time somebody's come out of this kingdom of this earth into his kingdom, which is life. And that's simply what it means. Now, in Matthew 25, 32, And before him shall be gathered all nations. He shall separate them one from another. So you're either in the kingdom of light or you're in the kingdom of darkness. There's no mixing of that. What does light have to do with darkness? So we see that from beginning to end. Uh, and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. He shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. I chose this to show you this kingdom was from the very beginning. You can't make the kingdom in, that people try to place it in different time frames. It's from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's where when they said show us the kingdom back to Luke 17 mm -hmm. show us the kingdom. Well the kingdom's always been you see, and he said the kingdom of God, where's it at? Within you. It Was it within them then? Mm -hmm. or was it, in, you know, say, a thousand years after that, a thousand years, so, and today, and if this thing continues on some hundreds of years or a thousand years, it's still the same kingdom. It's within you, and he'll deliver that up. Um, so, uh, I was hungered, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. This is what we do. We give the word of God. We give them bread. We give them this water. It's the spiritual understanding because anybody can give bread and water in the natural if you have it. That doesn't make you saved. Naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when, we, when saw we thee hungry and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? He was saying, we didn't see you naturally that way. You weren't. But Christ was showing him spiritually, you do this every time you bring this word of God to a person. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. 
Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. So we see this separation of kingdoms. If we are not preaching light, if we are not preaching deliverance from the prison, giving food and water, visiting the sick, sin is what keeps us in this prison of darkness. So I'm going to say this and hope we remember it. Remember the teaching back in Genesis where it says man's day shall be 120. And people will say, well, nobody can live past 120. But there have been some cases. He's talking spiritually. That has to be true. So because we don't understand it then, we say the Bible's not true. But that 120 is part of the 10. So you're going to take that 12 hours in a day. And that 12 hours is talking about the spiritual day of his kingdom of light here upon the earth. When this is over, what happens? There's that total separation of light. And dark. Right now, we're side by side. The world's out here, and we're, we're here studying. So we're still light upon this earth that is in darkness. So when we see that 120, if you will take those 10 from that first hour, and you'll take that 10 in the second and go on down to that 12 hour, you're going to get 120. And in each time of that hour, that spiritual day upon this earth, Christ has been there teaching each of those kingdoms come out of that darkness, and you'll get your 120, which is total perfection of, of the it's all been fulfilled and it's over. But in each time, those kingdoms are there, and you must come out of it. Just like those Samaritans or those ten lepers, all of them were lepers. All of them had received the gift that Christ gave to the world. He died for the sin of the whole world. So Christ had already done it while we were yet sinners. They could have received it. They had it, yet they did not keep what Christ has done. So we look at that forgiveness while we were yet sinners. Christ didn't wait for you to get saved and die for He died while we were all yet sinners. Does that help you? Yeah. So any questions or comment? Do we understand what she's talking about? Uh, I guess to be able to help you settle it, I guess, and the way I look at it, is you, you've heard it preached, and it's in the Bible, it's true. Uh, but what about the uh, come down to the 11th hour, but there's also that 12th hour? And it's like she said, that 120, there it comes down to that final, that 12th hour. But out of all of those 12 hours in a day, that 10 within it, you see what I'm saying? And so, but one day uh, in time, not, not our time, as earthly time, but in God's time, the spiritual time, there is a spiritual clock out there that's going to strike midnight. Now the world looks at it and says we're getting close to, you know, they've even got a clock, doomsday clock that what they think is because of atomic annihilation or this and the other. But God's got that spiritual clock that was from the beginning. And he's, you know, he said there shall be yet a hundred men's day will be a hundred and twenty. So he calls out of all of that in, in those times. You see, that's the best way that, that I get it in my head and settle it within me. I, I think also you just have to remember prison. So let's go to 79, Psalm 79 and 6. Let, let me say 79 and 6. Let me say something while we're turning there. Uh, you know, when she was talking about that uh, uh, thing, you know, it comes right back to what I was saying before, is that there is but one church. You know, we look at it and say from the beginning, all the way from the beginning, and to, to our present time, and anything's going on. But let's look we don't have no more time than what you got right now. Now you may have some, 
But you could, you, all of us could end in a split second. Christ could come back. We could all be destroyed and everything else go on. But, you know, right now is what we've got. This is it right now. This is what we live in. So, you know, but and there's just but one church, and that's of Christ. It's the way it's always been. And then Noah, and I, that's why I preached and taught that all, no matter what it is, Noah's in that same church. All of those, uh, you know, it's me. Everybody's in the same church. Mm -hmm. It's of Jesus Christ. It's his body, and we're in it. Well, I think also we have to remember that uh, Christ that day has been in every day upon this earth. Yeah. Uh, there's days uh, on the earth, but there's only that spiritual day. So he says one day is as a thousand years, as a thousand years is one day. Okay. He's saying, I've been in every day upon this earth, but I'm that day, yeah. and I'm not. He said, told uh, uh, David, he said, if I'd spoken of another day, he's telling even David, this is the only day you need to be in. This day that I have said was separate from all other days upon the earth. So we have to understand that 12 hours in a day. He's talking about this 12 hours of light in the time upon this earth. It's a spiritual understanding. Because we know there's many, I've been here many days upon this earth, but I've only lived so long in that day of Christ. Mm -hmm. And that day of Christ was Jesus Christ and him crucified for the sin of all the world. It went all the way back. It goes all the way forward. He promised it was to be. Abraham didn't. He looked forward and saw that day and glorified in it. It was a promise. And everything that God promises, he's going to bring to fruition. There's no there's no uh, slacking of what God says is going to be done. So Psalm 79 and 6, he's showing you separation of the kingdoms constantly through the word of God. Pour out thy wrath upon the heathen that have not known thee, upon the kingdoms that have not called upon thy name. Same thing in Peter. We're preached to, we're talked to, we're, the spirit woos us, and we've got to come out of those kingdoms. Or if not, you stay the goat and not the sheep. Because those that love God, John 3, 16, you go on that. Those that love God will come to the light. Cornelius loved God, but he didn't know about Christ. So he had to be taught. God will know what your heart is and send you help, but you still got to come to Christ. So, for they have devoured Jacob and laid waste his dwelling place. O oh, remember not against us former iniquity, iniquities. Let thy tender mercy speedily prevent us for we are brought very low. Help us, O God, of our salvation, for the glory of thy name. Deliver us, purge away our sins for thy name's sake. The only namesake God has is Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son. That's why he will purge away sin. Wherefore should the heathen say, Where is their God? Let him be known among the heathen in our sight by the revenging of the blood of thy servants which is shed. Let the sign of the prisoners come before thee. According to the greatness of thy power, preserve those that are appointed to die, and render unto our neighbors sevenfold into their bosom their reproach, wherewith they have reproached thee, O Lord. O Lord. So we, thy people, and sheep of thy pasture, shall give thee thanks forever. We will show forth thy praise to all generations. So, Matthew 1 talks about we are in the generation of Jesus Christ. Shows that you must be in that generation who was a son of David. When we say all these things, he wrote this that way to get us to think, what does that mean? So now, um, let's go to Psalms 102 to 20. Because it's the same thing he said in Matthew this is all the preaching that has to be. Um, he hath looked down from the height of his sanctuary from heaven did the Lord behold the earth to hear the groaning of the prisoner to loose those that are appointed to death. So 
that's the appointment everyone, the mark of the beast, has death upon it. Uh, 1 Corinthians 1 and 9, I believe it is. Could be 2, but I believe it's 1 and 9. Paul said, we have the sentence of death upon us. And that we should not trust in the flesh. We must trust in the spirit. Every one of us has the mark of death upon us. And if we keep that mark of death from that beginning to the end, then you will not gain kingdom of heaven. Here, you don't get forgiveness in this world, nor the world to come. So forgiveness and coming out of the kingdom of darkness is now to come into that kingdom of light. So it's all about time frame. Everything is showing you God's got a perfect setup of every number in this word of God means something to show you that you can tell what time you're in, where you came out of. Where'd you say that might have been at Corinthians 1? Uh, 1 and 9, I believe it is. 1 and 9? 1 Corinthians 1 and 9? 1 and 9. Mm -hmm. it must be 2 Corinthians. Uh, I might be. Yeah. It's 2 Yeah, but we have we have the senses in the past tense, but we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but God which raised us the, the dead, who delivered us from so great a death and, and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. So we look and say oh, such great death. Well everybody dies of a death if you're looking at the flesh. Mm -hmm. You know. But what's the great death? Separation from God, which is hell, you know, and out of darkness and so on. And while she was talking about over there in that other song, you know, I was sitting and thinking, you know, you hear it said all the time. I say it and so on like that. But I think I say it with a different, <laughs> hopefully a different understanding. Uh, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Now, a lot of times people say that on Sunday morning to say, this is the day that the Lord has made. Made us a Sunday morning. But while it's Sunday here, it's Monday somewhere else, or maybe even later. <laughs> you know? So this is, when we look at it, really, that day of the Lord, yeah, that is Christ. This is the day that the Lord hath made. It is Christ. It's today, this is Wednesday, in 2023. 27th, I believe. I believe the day is 27, I think. But anyway, of September. But this is, you know, we're in the day. If you're in Christ, you're in the day. And I always go back to Sister Jane when she realized that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. And she said, and that's what that means? Well, it's just, you could see it. It just clicked with her. That's been quite a few years ago. And it clicked with her that, you know, everybody looks and, you know, talks about that thousand years out there. But it's in the Lord. It's the spiritual thing that we're in that day. We're children of the day. We're not children of the night. So, you know, and, and go ahead if you... Well, let's go to Romans 8 because we have to realize whether we believe this word of God, whether we don't, we are still under the law. Everybody, you are under the law. And the law shows you that you have sinned, and no matter if you think you fulfill that law, you cannot do it, so you're still under sin. But the law was for the, all the earth. People say, it has nothing to do with me. God says it does, so therefore, you can't get, a, a, you can't go over it, under it, around it, it's there. So we must come out of that, that law that holds us, because the strength of sin is the law. So that law holds you. Now the world also, you know, when we won't come to this true word of God, it holds you in prison in lots of different ways. And we see them, the groaning of the prisoners, because if you don't worship this way, you're lost. If you don't worship this way, you're lost. So we must find the true way, because God is going to show us condemnation here. That goes, that goes back, comes to my mind, as legion. 
because so many people told him and down through the thing, you know, that this is how you get saved. This is how you walk right with God until the true word, the word came to him and he realized what it was and he was found what clothed mm -hmm. and in his right mind. Uh, Romans 8, therefore, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. What are you condemned to? There's a, a condemnation, death. Death, yeah. That condemnation of death is upon you. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. So we overcame death. We had a resurrection like Romans 6. What were, we were, um, let's see how, let's say it over here. Um, Romans 6 and 4. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we all should, should walk in newness of life. We had that baptism, that resurrection of coming up out of that into newness of life. And so this Romans 8, for the law could not do it do, do in that it was weak through the flesh. God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. And of course goes on, you could go on and read all that which is uh, just wonderful but let's go to 11 or let's go 10. If Christ be in you and the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by a spirit that dwell in you. Because if you live after the flesh, you're going to die. You're dead here in trespasses and sin, and you'll be dead on the other side. It's a, it's a second death. It's a eternal death. And so we, we try to convince people this uh, pertains to you whether you believe it or not. Or else why would I have to tell my children anything that are in sin? I could just let them go on and never mention, hey, you're in trouble. You're not going to make it into the kingdom of God because you're in sin and you're staying in sin. Why preach? Why teach? Why testify if it does not matter? So we see it does. It means everything to people upon this earth, but they may not want it. They may not want to realize it. But one thing for sure, e each of us should know it. I could easily be in fellowship with some of my children if I would just have let it go by mm -hmm. and say, does it matter? I can't do that. I can't let, I am uh, to be a, um, a caretaker of people. And sin has to be shown to people that it will kill you. It will, not only on this side does it do great harm, but it does harm on the other side. Eternal damnation. Any comment or question? I don't have a question, but I'm so glad that Kathy talked about and y'all expounded on the prison because I didn't look at it on the spiritual side. I was looking at, he said he went to preach to the prison and I thought it was the prisons, you know, like the bars. And I never thought it's about it spiritual. being mm -hmm. spiritual like the sin prison. That makes so much more sense. Yeah, so even while the ark was prepared, preparing, mm -hmm. Christ went and preached to them in the prisons. Yeah. Well, you're looking a long time ago. Yeah. So, you know, and he did for everybody. And as, you know, that's why we can look at it and see the segment of time that Christ has been in 
in this world's time in the Ten Kings and all that. I turned back there to Revelation 17 and, and I guess it's 17. Yeah, 17 and 16 and the Ten Horns, you know, the Beast and stuff. It was all the, I got wrote down over on the side of had wrote there for a while, the doctrine, what they preach and teach. All of that, uh, anything outside of Christ is sin. And if we say, well, you know, well, you hear people say, well, they believe in God and they're going to get to heaven because we do this work and that work. And we even have churches uh, uh, in, in Christendom that in a sense we preach it's not by works, you know, even though there's things that we got to do, it's out of that love and thing. But they look at the more that you do or you have to do this to reach people and to do this. What about God? What's God doing? You see what you understand what I'm saying? That that God, that this grace of God hath appeared unto all men. So and you say, well, then why do you need to preach, James? Why do you need to teach? Why do we need to testify? Why do we need to come to church? Is because we love God and, and things, and we want to tell of this story that God could use us to help reach them to activate that faith and stuff that they have. And, and 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 so on but it's not by works you you can go out here and, and you know and it's just sort of like work 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 you know we 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 as a church or an assembly we've got to work 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 and go out here and do all of these things what we've got to do is is the work which god told us to do is believe on christ you know because they said what work shall we do then they ask you in john 6 what work shall we do and he said, believe on him whom the Father has sent. So what is our work? What are we to do? When we are asked, we give an answer of the hope that lies within us. All these others in this thing, where he's talking about the, the beast and the, you know these ten horns and these kingdoms and all these kings that have their hour and power of darkness. That's what Christ, she was saying. That Christ looked in and said, now is your hour and power of darkness. Now, you've got it now. But, you know, he's the light. He's the day. The rest of you, you're in the night. You're going to run along. Are the, he asked the question, are there not 12 hours in the day? Well, if we look at it, we sit and think, well, my goodness, we, we sit and think, well, there's 12 or 24 hours in a day. And we know even at that, Christ let us be able to see, and we've studied this before, but let us be able to see even in the natural. Well, it's dark out there right now. But it's still Wednesday. It's still Wednesday. Now it's Wednesday night, starting into it and at 12. So we have parts of even in the natural nighttime, part of it's in the daytime. So many divided. But Christ's looking at it and tell, trying to get us to understand the 12 hours. Are there not 12 hours in the day? As Sister Kevin said, there's 12 hours, and the other one's running right, right beside it. The darkness is running right beside it. And, you know, and he came in. All of those times, those segment of times, those four times upon the earth, and all, he has been there in all that from the beginning. This kingdom was before the foundation of the world. And then then another thing coming at all, you can have comments or whatever. Sister Kathy says that. And, and as I said Sunday, and I think a lot, just a few weeks ago or something, I'd said, and I, I used to say this a whole lot, and I still say it today. When you come out from among the world, all of those kingdoms, all of that doctrine and philosophy that's out here in the world and in the darkness that you come to the light. When you come out from among the world, where in the world did you go? You come into the kingdom of his dear son. You move that was from before the found the same one that all of them from the beginning, all of them that was in Moses' time and all the patriarchs' time and our time. <clears throat> You know, and this is the last time. In all of this, we're in the same kingdom, in the same church of Jesus Christ. And we're dwelling in him. And we're in him in that day. And that day, one day is with the Lord. Because he's the day is as a thousand years. And a thousand years is as one day. He tells us, don't be ignorant of this fact. But I think 
so many, and I used to be ignorant to the fact, you know. And so, and I think there's a lot that we're trying to we're trying to explain it fleshly instead of spiritually. That you know, hey, yeah, there's some more time out there. And another another bunch of people is going to have opportunity to get in a little different than what we get in, or some of them before got in a little different than what we we have got in. And it's all got to be the same way. God is no respecter of person. Salvation is of the Lord. There's a thing went back here uh, to Philemon because you have to understand this one too. Paul was saying he was a prisoner. Mm -hmm. So how could Paul be a prisoner? Of Christ. Yeah. yeah, a prisoner of Christ because he was still saying, I'm in the flesh upon this earth. But he was in Christ Jesus. So let's go there and explain that just a little bit because you're going to have people maybe question this of Paul, but it's simple when you look at it. The Bible's very simple. Christ is not trying to get us not to understand. He's trying to get us to understand by everything he puts here. So uh, Philemon um, 9, Yet for love's sake I'd rather beseech thee, being such as one as Paul the age, now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ. He was still staying here in the flesh, preaching and teaching in Christ. So he was a prisoner of the flesh for Christ, for the work upon this earth. This is like a prison here, but he's saying, I'm a prisoner of Jesus Christ. I'll stay in the flesh as long as Christ desires me to. He said, but he wanted to go on. And so did Christ. Christ, how long, Father? Because he... The Father sent him to the earth, so he he didn't want to be here either in the city. He wanted to be back with the Heavenly Father, and that was the desire of Paul. But it was better for Paul to stay, he said, in another place, so he could keep teaching to the people. So let's go on over to, um, um, well, 23. Uh, there salute, salute the Ephraim my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus. That's what you become. You're still in the flesh here, but we are uh, here in a sense captured in this flesh upon this earth, but we got a job to do. So we're, we're fellow prisoners still yet with Paul, with all these people that were bound in the flesh, so to speak. So Let's go. Just be that first verse there. Yeah, first. I mean, yeah, all of it. Yeah, and dearly beloved and fellow laborer, you know. And then he goes on to say, one that was my son, uh, Onesimus, uh, whom I have begotten in my bonds. And we'd look and say, well, Paul, as far as we know, he, he never had any children. You know, you know, naturally, never was married. Naturally. But well, he said he knew how to lead about a wife and a sister. And he said to my son, Timothy, but he talks about it in the gospel. And we see that that is spiritual. Well, he's saying, uh, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Yeah, so Timothy, our brother. Let's go back to Romans uh, uh, 16 and 7. Because he states this throughout the word of God a lot. And you just can't go through them all. But these names mean something. They're just not Jewish names. He was he was showing you a lot of these people were my fellow prisoners in Christ Jesus, and they weren't just from the Jewish nation. So a lot of people uh, still kind of preach and teach that, that, you know, that type of job. But he's showing all kinds of people here, uh, Quilla and Priscilla and all those wonderful people of God. But in uh, 16 and 17, Salute of uh, 16 to 7. Yeah. Uh, salute Androgenius and Junia, my kinsmen, my fellow prisoners, who are of note among the apostles, who also were in Christ before me. I think that is lovely. I think that is just so good that Paul, everything he puts in this Bible shows you a big story and a, and a mystery. When they would 
talk about those uh, like the the apostles. You remember that went around when we were first saved. And I didn't have understanding. Didn't know what in the world they were talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. About you couldn't be an apostle unless you'd oh, seen okay. Christ. And, yeah. Which is true, but not the way they were saying it. Mm -hmm. So understanding comes when you get to be a little more of an elder. So let's go back to Deuteronomy 23. And I know I'm jumping around a little bit, but it shows you certain things. And then once you see it, if you say, aha, that's so easy. Uh, so 23 and 2 of Deuteronomy. <coughs> A bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord, even to his tenth generation shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord. An Ammonite or a Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord, even to their tenth generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. And this is the reason why, and I'll explain the ten here in a minute. Because they met you not with bread and with water in the way when you came forth out of Egypt, because they hired against thee Balaam, the son of Beor, of Pether, of Mesopotamia, to curse thee. These did not want the kingdom of God. They wanted to stay in their kingdom. You can't stay a Moabite. You can't stay an Ammonite. You've got to come into the kingdom. And when you, you still are a Moabite in the flesh, but not spiritually. We see Ruth was a Moabite. Yes, and she yes. come into the kingdom. The lineage of Christ. She come and <laughs> took up on her husband's name, though. Yeah. And that's a spiritual mystery. It's not like no. you. It's, uh, you know, those are those are natural things. And But the spiritual mystery is that you must have a heavenly father. And if you get to the tent, and you still not come out, you're going to stay what you are. Time frame. All the way back to the beginning, you had time in that first section, and you had an hour, an hour of that day that you could have believed. The testimony, the preaching was just as powerful as everything now. So we're marching along. And now we see that, that we're close to the end. And we should be able to see how close we are, actually. So they could not enter in because they stayed in their generation. They stayed in their beliefs and their doctrines. They did not come with bread and water. Just like in Matthew 25. When, when gave we bread? When gave we all this? We've got to be spiritually... When I give you this word of God and you're you're lost, I've given you a drink of water because that old tongue's parched, it's dry, it's thirsty. But if I bring you this water, I give it. Now you may not accept it, but if you accept it, then you receive the spirit of God. And it comes in the heart. God's going to know the heart. He's going to know if you truly believe all this stuff. He's not going to, he's not going to, I wonder what Kathy truly believes. I wonder what Kathy yeah. truly is. No, God knows me, and I'm so thankful for that because, as I always say, somebody can come along and say, can't stand Kathy, don't believe, don't this. <coughs> or somebody can say, think Kathy's wrong. But God knows Kathy. That's why he's going to call me by name. I mean, you're going to come out of death by name. Mm -hmm. But if not, you're going to come out of that. You, you don't get caught. You're not a friend of God. I, you know, when I have a friend, I know their name. When I see a stranger, I don't know them. Yeah, I was thinking the other day on something. It's been probably a week or so ago. And they used to, I haven't heard it in a long time. There used to be some groups around, used to sing. Uh, Billy Jean and some of them used to sing it a lot. Uh, you know, the singing Revelation. Uh, Jesus gave me water. You know, it was one of those little round songs like going to God. And, and it was not from the well, you know, and and he talked. It's the story of the woman. He you know, met a little woman from Samaria, and you know, and then I was sitting and think. What I was thinking upon was the rich man in hell, and he couldn't get the water no longer. He 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 went past. He got it. You know, here's the tent. I mean, trying to relate it back to this. Here's the 
they come up on this, this 10 time up to the 10th generation and they're going to stay in their doctrine they don't want this water of God and I see you know and 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 people still yet don't understand you know they'll sing those songs and things and understand that that's spiritual that woman when she went to the well it wasn't this and that's what she came after in the natural you know she brought her picture but in that song it says she dropped her picture but oh she was made richer because she got that living water and it was not from the well and then Jesus gave me water Jesus gave me water he gave me that living water and it was not from the well so we all have to have that same water we all have to be washed clean that's the baptism that's the washing and the regeneration of the word of God elsewise the thief on the cross, God had respect for persons too. Well, also, I won't go into it. Yeah, it's 15 hours. When you get time, read about the Omer and the Homer and all the ephod of the flour. You'll see a tenth deal of flour, what is some it? oil, and in each time frame, he gave that bread. Yeah. He gave that mixture that you could have bread in it. And that represents time. And you'll see a tenth of the flower. Everything's a spiritual meaning. And everything, when you get it in your mind like that, you'll see, ah, when it all comes together, it's the whole thing. Yeah. It's the whole bread. And Christ, when he took the bread, he gave them pieces. And he could expound on everything, every from beginning to end. But there's one more thing, uh, because you need to know this. And remember the... When we talked on Abraham giving a tenth of everything from beginning to end, he went to every one of them. He got he had he gave everything to everybody. Paul did the same thing. He said, "I withheld nothing from you." Christ did the same thing. Everything the heavenly fathers told me, I've told you, told it to us all. And the same thing with the uh, the uh, Genesis twenty-eight. I won't read it because it is getting late. But when you have time, read about uh, where uh, Jacob had laid his head and the angels descending and ascending. But let's go down to uh, uh, 22, chapter 28, 22 of Genesis. And this stone, which I set for a pillar, shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. You got to bring it that tenth every time. You've got to give the fullness of the bread. You've got to bring it to everybody. So when we see this tenth, they all promised, I'll give to the tenth. Why? Because the spiritual meaning's there. <coughs> and, and I'd have to go into a lot more to. But, but if you'll read about the, the omer and the, the flower and the oil, you'll see that through all the Word of God. And it's too much. You'd have to spend hours on this. And we just don't have time for that. Yeah, we got another Wednesday or two or so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, the basis is what yeah. you do is teach it. And then, once you see that, you can go through it and you just, you'll yeah. just get it easily. Where was it on omer? Oh, it's all, you know, I just have to go through Ezekiel. Leviticus. Yeah, Leviticus. there's things in Ezekiel about the chambers and everything. Huh. Yeah, it's, it's, there's just so much. Anything else? Any question? Well, you know um, what you read about Paul and he says, my fellow Christians, and I read that several times and still thought it was people that were in the prison like a real prison and then you read it and it was just so clear that it's the Christian it's his fellow prisoners and it's, it, and you're right that's such a beautiful way to put it and we how much how would we rather be a prisoner of Christ that's sort of like yeah. Tim and I said, I guess the last time he was here, he was talking about you could be a, be in jail behind bars, mm -hmm. prison, 
jail, but still yet be free. Yeah. But the only way you can, now they can let you out because you've served your time, mm -hmm. but you're still in prison. Mm -hmm. Okay, so but you can be in, you can be uh, in there for as it could be all of your life. I mean, because if you've done a, an atrocity that might uh, say sentence you to 30, 40, 50 years unless they let you out on good behavior and all this other stuff, you know how it goes. But you could spend the rest of your life for 30 or 40 years and die in prison before you pay the debt that they've assigned to you. But also, if you receive Christ, you're free, even while behind those physical bars. So you're a prisoner. There's another thing that came into my mind. Uh, I was going to try to find it, but I'll just say it and we'll look it up. Uh, when Christ was talking to the Pharisees of the place, and, and he was telling them about this word of God, of course they believed in it, and the Pharisees said, we've never been in bondage to any man. Yeah. But Christ was still trying to show, you've been bound in your sins, Sin. and that was the bondage that he was talking about, that you're bound in those chains. And so we see in Revelation, the chain, all those different things. And so we're looking at that type of bondage, and that may help a little bit. There's another scripture, but they keep popping in my mind. I'll wait till yeah. next one. You know, they, and that brings a song. Goes, uh, and I was thinking of this one the other day. He broke my chains. There used to be a song, a fairly long song, that you sing. He broke my chains. And you know, and so, you know, we're chained down. And, and but he said. When he sets us free, he makes us free indeed, you know. If I set you free, you're free indeed. Mm -hmm. And so you're, the chains of this world and the demands of this world, you know, you don't have to adhere to. You're free. It, it's going to go on. It's going to get worse and worse. Uh, you know, all of these things, it's going to get worse. It is. But we can rejoice that we are free. We're no longer a prison and no longer a held by sin and death. It, it is a grip and a hold on us until we find Christ and then we're, we're free. I also remember Galatians 4, that bondage. Jerusalem is in bondage, bondage. to that one because... And uh, still yet, even as he said, even yeah, until not this understanding stuff. what the bondage is because unless we have truth, we're still bound down by the sins. Yes. Heavy weight, heavy burden. Yeah. All right.